Okay, this is our lesson two on modular arithmetic, and we're going to do uh, take a look at it, how addition and subtraction, and then we're going to talk a little bit about division as well um, using modular arithmetic. Uh, to do this, we're going to first kind of take a look at uh, modulo five um, to begin with, um, and we're going to start with zero. So if we kind of start, you know, this would be zero mod five, one mod five, two mod five, three mod five, four mod five. And then I'm going to make the columns of numbers like we did in the first lesson and just keep going through this. And you can see um, and, and recognize what's going on. Um, so the question is, what happens to the residue when you add two numbers together? So for instance, if I add 7 and 8 together, well, 7 plus 8 is 15. So my answer, my answer is mod 0. Well, 7 is mod 2, 3, 8 is mod 3, or 2 mod 5 and 3 mod 5. And so 2 plus 3 equals 5. So um, 5 mod 5 is the same as 0 mod 5. And so you can see that when we added 7 and 8, um, we could have also done it just using modular arithmetic to find out what the modular answer was. So like, for instance, if I said, what is um, the mod 5 answer of 6 plus 13? Well, one way to do it is do 6 plus 13 and then determine what it is, mod, you know, what 19 is mod 5. The other is to say 6 is modular 1, 13 is modular 3, or three, 1 mod 5 and 3 mod 5. And so you do 1 plus 3 is 4, and so the answer is 4 modular 5, which is the same as 19 is 4 mod 5. So that leaves us with a um, bit of a theorem we can say. We can say that if x is equivalent to y mod 5, then x plus 1 is equivalent to y plus 1 mod 5. Okay, so we can, we can basically go back and forth between modular and non-modular to do our modular arithmetic. Uh, if we generalize it, we say x is a congruent to y mod 7, then x plus a is congruent to y plus a mod 7. So for instance, if I said... Um, if I've got uh, 12 plus 19, and I want to find out what this solution is, mod 7, there's two ways to do it. One way to do it is to get, make this 5 um, mod 7, is to convert each of them to mod 7 first. So 5 mod 7 plus, and then this one's going to be also 5 mod 7. So when I add these together, that gives me 10 mod 7, and 10 mod 7 just is equivalent to 3 mod 7. So the modular 7 uh, solution to 12 plus 19 is 3 modular 7. Or you could have done 31 and then changed 31 to modular 7 and gotten 3 modular 7. So the reason we learn about that is to do a problem like this. The remainders, when two natural numbers are divisible by 12, are 8 and 11, respectively. We don't know what these two numbers are. These two numbers are x and y. Right? What, what, what these two numbers are, we don't know. But we do know when you divide them by 12, you get a remainder of 8 and you get a remainder of uh, 11, respectively. Now, there's two ways to think. Well, let, let's do this modular first, and then we'll talk about another thing in just a second. So if you think about this, um, what we do know is x... The first one, when you divide by 12 is 8, that means that this number must be equivalent to 8 mod 12. Okay, that's what it means. It's, the remainder is 8, and so it's 8 mod 12. And then y is going to be 11 mod 12. So now it makes this answer problem a lot easier. So even though we don't know the number, find the remainder when the sum is divided by 12, add these two up, because these are the, the congruences of those two problems, that gives you 19 mod 12 which is equivalent to 7 mod 12, which must mean the remainder, because that's what it is. Whenever it's less than 12, it's the residue or the remainder. And so 7 mod 12 means it's got a remainder of 7. So the answer to this question, when the remainder when the sum is divided by 12, the answer is 7. Another way to think about this is to say that x is equivalent to 12 times some number plus 8, it's called 12a because that's called the division algorithm, why that works. 
and y is also equal to 12 times some other number. We don't know what a and b are, but there's some integer, plus 11. If we add those together, that's going to give us 12a plus 8 plus 12b plus 11, which gives us um, 12 times a plus b, if we factor out that 12, plus 19. So if we divide that by 12, well, we know that because this is an integer, that that's just going to be 0 remainder, something remainder 0, and then you just do 19 divided by 12, and you get remainder 7. And so that's another way to think of it using algebra. So understanding modular arithmetic like this using algebra can also be very helpful, and we'll use that later on as well. Um, what happens if we divide the su if that sum is divisible by 6? Hmm. Well, if you think about it, 6 and 12 have something in common. And that is that because 6 is a factor of 12, if we think about modular 12 as, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all the numbers are congruent to those uh, 12 numbers, modular 12. If we then go think about modular 6, it would be like this. And so we can create what we call a one-to-one -one mapping that map, or not one-to-one -one mapping, but a mapping that maps, well, obviously mod 12, all these just go to the same thing mod 6, but then you can map, map uh, 6 mod 12 to 0 mod 6, and 7 mod 12 to 1 mod 6, and 8 mod 12 to 2 mod 6, and so on and so forth. So because there is, um, because 6 is a factor of 12, you can do this. So all we now have to do is, what is 19? mod 6 equivalent to, well, it's just going to be 1 mod 6, because um, we can either look at it like 19 mod 6, or we can look at it as 7 mod 12 is equal to 1 mod 6. Either way works. Okay, so if we look at another problem, what is the remainder when 3 plus 11 plus 9 plus 1 dot 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 to 147 is divided by 4? Oh, this is interesting. Well, if you notice, this sum, all the numbers are, uh, are um, separated by 8. So what we really have is 3 mod 8 plus 3 mod 8, 11 is 3 mod 8, plus um, 3 mod 8, so on and so forth until we get all the way till, well, 147 um, is going to be 3 mod 8. And the question is, how many of these do we have? Well, how many terms are in the sequence? Well, you do your first minus the last divided by the total. So we do 144 divided by 8. Um, 144 divided by 8 is going to give you um, 18. You add 1 and you get 19. And so there are 19 terms in this. And so 3 uh, plus 3 19 times is 57 mod 8, which 57 mod 8 is equivalent to 1 mod 8, since 57 divided by 8 is 7, with remainder 1. And then 1 mod 8, because 4 is a um, factor of 8, is going to be equal to 1 mod 4. And so that's our answer. Um, you could have also recognized that all these are also 3 mod 4 and done the same thing, and just figured out what 57 mod 4 is. Okay, determine the sum modular 6, the, determine the modular 6 residue of this sum. Well, we just think about each one of these in terms of mod 6. And so this is 1 mod 6 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. This is 0, right? This is 0. We can actually start thinking about something. 1 plus 5 is also 0. 2 plus 4 is also 0. Right, those are all 0 mod, mod 6. 7 plus 11, right, that's 1 mod 6 and 5 mod 6, same thing with 8 and 10, and so it turns out that you get 3 plus 9, which is also 0 mod 6. So the modulus 6 residue of the sum is just 0, which means that if you added all those together, you would get a multiple of 6. Uh, the last one we're going to look at, oh, that was the last one we're going to look at. So that's our last problem. Again, you can use this understanding how modular arithmetic can help us to solve some very interesting problems.